basically once we are done with all the loads uh, we have dead loads we have sidl live load breaking load centrifugal water water uh, current loads and all the different uh, sorts of loads basically what we need to have is a load table okay uh, water current load is uh, the load uh, wherein the water if you are, if you are anticipating that uh, there is going to be water current upon the piers incident directly then you will take uh, the impact of water in two directions which is in zero degrees which is perpendicular and in 20 degrees so this is as per the code so but this is not a very governing load case but you have to consider it second of all when you have a load uh, table with you i purposely i intentionally did not fill it up because uh, the values can be uh, anything you can get any value based upon uh, what is the sort of uh, gear that you are looking for so once you have the load table you need to know what is the vertical load or the horizontal loads in transverse and longitudinal directions lever arms as i discussed all the lever arms have to be specified what are the different moments so based on uh, horizontal uh, horizontal loads acting upon their respective lever arm will get the longitudinal moment and accordingly the transverse moment so over here you see live load case 1 case 2 case 3 case 4 over here you'll have different values okay it is possible that even if for case 4 will have a very high vertical value you will get a very less transverse value for this case number 2 you'll have a very high transverse value you'll get a very less vertical value and accordingly the transverse moment <clears throat> after that once you have the load case table uh, you basically need to look at the dbr or if the dbr is specifying or redirecting us to some other code code reference then you have to go to that code and to see what type of different load factors that we have to consider in order to complete our design so over here we've got three different uh, combination uh, segments one is sls uls and sbc sls stands for serviceability uls is for uh, ultimate load and sbc is for the safe bearing capacity since we are designing the footing sbc is very important so sls is basically telling us the serviceability ultimate load is basically telling us about uh, ultimate load cases will be used for the reinforcement design and sbc is for the checks that we are going to have later for the foundation so these what what are these load factors basically whatever load cases that you are going to have over here this load case 1 2 3 whatever loads that you have got based on that you will be multiplying these with the load factors and then you will be creating your combinations so this basically tells you that you have to take one factored of the normal dead load you have to take sidl 1.2 you have to take live load 1.1 multiplication factor and basically then so accordingly you will get the load values the moment values over here <clears throat> yeah so once we start with the design uh, of the footing the one of the most the single most important aspect of uh, footing design is pressure distribution for the sake of discussion i have just taken a single load case governing value which is uh, indicating over here the p is the uh, axial load which is 1500 kN the longitudinal moment is 1300 and transverse moment is 307 these are hypothetical values i have just taken it for the sake of having a um, having a discussion so uh, just to tell you about the concept the sbc that we had considered for the design is 1200 So now the distribution and the design of a footing is an iterative process. So you have to come across a value uh, out of the iterations that you are going to do, and after every failed iteration, you have to re you have to go back to the footing dimensions that were earlier decided. Okay, so SBC over here is twelve hundred. This is telling me about the footing uh, dimension, length, breadth, and height. In trial number one, what I did was I took Length as forty four point three, breadth as five, height as one point five. Uh, now this pressure distribution, uh, there is a separate software for this uh, because uh, this is a long process and it is somewhat a complicated process. So we use a software for this. So I am directly uh, showcasing the values. So here, after the distribution of pressure, these are the values that he has come across. So what are these? P one, P two, P three, P four. remember that uh, those points for a b c d it is uh, these point 1 2 3 4 are indicative of the four points of the footing all right so of uh, we have to ensure that the pressure that is distributed has to be less than the sbc so our sbc is 1200 over here after the distribution of pressure it is come up, coming to 1150 500 and 350 and 50 so this basically tells us that okay no value is exceeding the uh, uh, sbc so it is safe okay 
But you see over here, it is only saved by a very small margin, only by 50 kilonewtons. Okay. Uh, so only by a value of 50, it is only exceeding. So we'll have a reiteration. So in the next trial, I'll increase the dimensions. Earlier it was 4.3, I went for 4.5, and I increased the height by 100 mm. So over here, I got a redistribution. Over here, we got 1250, which is more than SBC. So that is why it became unsafe. In the third trial, I increased my width and my height, and I got a very decent uh, margin to my SBC. So it was safe and I carried on with it. So basically what we have to do is the area under tension has to be less, uh, and the ratio of area under tension and the total area has to be less than 20%. So what this basically is, uh, if you have a foundation, these are the points, one, two, three, four. If you have a foundation and you're trying to redistribute it, uh, the foundation uh, redistribution software, we used to have a BT program, uh, which is not, uh, a very well advanced software. Uh, it's a small application that we use. But uh, what basically we have to do is we have to put in the coordinates of all the four points and uh, the different load cases over there. And we'll get a direct value. It will give me a y axis value and an x axis value and directly um, by, uh, bisect this. So, this area that you see over here, the shaded portion, it is showing that a certain load case is imparting a certain area to be under tension. So, this tension area has to be less than 20% of the total area. In that case, we are good to go. So that is the basic uh, premise of doing this. Yeah, so <clears throat> the reinforcement design, uh, it is exactly similar to what we do with the uh, uh, RCC footing designs that we have been doing in RCC subject. So it is not too difficult to come up with the reinforcement. You just have to have the minimum, uh, you have to check that the minimum requirements are met and you know and the ast required is sufficiently catered to and in that case we are good to go um, this is just a small sketch which i, which I made for uh, uh, in order to tell you the homogeneity of the reinforcement that is uh, continuing from the foundation to the end of the seismic arrester so if you see over here these bars are continuous up till uh, this point okay we don't have such a long bar, but we'll have maybe couplers over here. We'll have a joint over here, the lapping over here somewhere. But the continuity of the reinforcement has to be maintained up to the last point, up till here. Second of all, there is a mesh uh, just below the bearing pedestals. There's a mesh just below the seismic arrestor. And there is uh, based upon if the fear cap is a corbel or fear cap is a bending member, you have an additional reinforcement over here. If you are interested to know more about peer caps, if you are interested to know more about uh, seismic arresters, we can have a separate webinar for that because that in itself is a very big topic. And uh, yeah, so over here, if you see that uh, uh, the foundation, the reinforcement arrangement is not too different from the foundations that we design in RCC, uh, in our RCC subjects. And uh, it basically follows some additional checks and if you are good on the checks, then we can go uh, go on with the reinforcement. Okay. So uh, once you are done with the footing, we have a few checks which are very common, which all of you know, which everyone has an idea of. It's like basically the checking for overturning, just to check, uh, you know, what is an overturning moment? Is that moments and shears and uplift forces? Yeah constantly trying to uh, overturn the foundation that the resistance moments are those moments that resist this overturning. Okay, basically we use a factor of two so that we are at a decent level of, uh, we have a decent margin and it has to be uh, passing for all the load cases. We also check for sliding, uh, horizontal and vertical moments, uh, sorry, forces have to counterbalance or the factor of safety has to be more than two the same way. Friction resistance at the base of the footing is a very crucial uh, uh, crucial entity to the stability of the foundation. There's also another check, which is as per uh, IRS CBC. I would recommend that you go to this and if you have to know some, something more about this, uh, this is a section I would recommend. Uh, why do we need a crack with check is because uh, control of cracking is important for obtaining the acceptable appearance and long-term durability of concrete. We are basically checking uh, if at all you are going to have cracks on the concrete, if that crack width is under a certain limit or not. 
that is the only basis of checking it so it is one of the serviceability requirements and it depends completely upon the reinforcement that we are using and the cover depth so if we are failing on this test we'll go back to our reinforcement design and then we'll basically increase the number of bars or increase the diameter of bars